Hi, I'm Jill Fry, and this is the second in this video series in how to take your starry night shots. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the settings that you need on your camera. In this video, we're going to talk about the settings you need to do on your camera to ensure you can take the best nightscape photos. The first thing you're going to have to do is to make sure that all your images are taken in RAW. Now this is really important. You have to remember that the camera is a tool. It doesn't see everything like we see it. So it is important to have your images in RAW so that they can be adjusted in Lightroom to bring it back to what you see. So with your camera, to select the RAW images, you need to go into your menu. Select the selection that says Image Quality. Scroll into it and select the one that says RAW. Now just remember that every single camera is different, so they are all located in different places. So the thing is, make sure you Refer to your manual to find these sort of items that you need. The next thing to do is to turn off noise reduction in your camera. The reason for this is when you want to do star trails, you will find that when you have noise reduction turned on, if you're taking a 20 second exposure, the camera will then take another 20 seconds to do the noise reduction in the camera. And it's not necessary you can do your noise reduction in your post-processing anyway. So make sure you go to your menu and ensure that long exposure noise reduction is turned off. The next thing too is if you don't have a remote shutter button, the best thing to do is to put your camera on a two second delay of taking the shot. That way, once you've pressed the button, your hands are completely off the camera and you don't have any camera shake. Another important thing to think about is your white balance. Now, basically what I say is it doesn't matter what white balance you select, it's your personal preference, but don't shoot on auto. Now, the reason why I say don't shoot on auto is because if you come to work doing panoramas or star trails, if your camera is automatically selecting the white balance for every shot, it will select a different white balance for every shot. So you need to ensure that your it is not on auto. Your white balance can be on fluorescent or whatever setting you like. I personally like putting it on fluorescent. But if you do put on something like fluorescent, make sure you turn it back when you're finished because you'll go and take a day shot and you'll think, my goodness, that colour's a little bit strange. So make sure you turn it back to daylight or something like that when you're finished. The next thing is to look at your settings. And in this we're talking about your f-stop and your speed and your ISO. You need to be able to change these manually in the back of your camera. So first of all, let's talk about the time exposure that you have your lens open for. Basically, it depends totally on whether you've got a full frame body like my Canon 6D or whether you've got a cropped like my Canon 700D. It will determine the difference in time. What also determines the difference in time is what lens you use. The wider the lens, the longer the time you can go without having star trails. If you have a narrower lens, you have to go shorter or you'll get those little streaks and not the nice little dots that you want with your stars. So, for example, with my Canon 6D and my 14mm Samyang, I can go as long as 25 seconds before I really start to notice little streaks rather than little dots of the stars. Generally speaking, for most crop cameras with a wide-angle lens, 
20 seconds is about right. So that's a really good starting, starting place and see whether that is going to get you the desired results. The next thing is you need to talk about the f-stop. With your f-stop or aperture, you need to make sure that on your lens it's opened as wide as it will go. You want to get as much light coming into the camera as possible. So if you can go 2.8, fantastic. If you can't, if your lens will only go to f4, for example, that's as far as you can go. But open it up as wide as you can go. The next thing to talk about is ISO. If you go above 1600, you're going to get a lot of noise coming into your picture. So I would recommend starting with 1600. Now that you've got all the camera settings right, you're ready to head out to take your first night shot. So in the next video, we're going to go outside at night and I'm going to show you the best way to focus your pictures because it's incredibly hard to do it at night if you don't know how to do it. You've got your equipment, you've got your settings, we're ready to go. This is the fun part. <laughs>